Using the wrong temperature on your hot end can lead to some damn ugly prints. And who's got time for that? Oozing blobs and strings on your part are just some of the most noticeable. Running too low of a temperature can clog your nozzle, and the next thing you know, you're hearing that dreaded click of the extruder skipping. So what do we do? We take the time and print a temperature tower. Everybody's got time for that. It doesn't take very long, and it's worth every minute. So what is a temperature tower, and what can we learn from printing one? Well, a temperature tower is a vertical structure that consists of multiple horizontal sections. Each section is printed at a different temperature that is usually five degrees cooler than the previous section. This way, you can pinpoint that temperature that will give you the best results with a specific filament. The temperature decreases from the bottom to the top. For example, if the bottom section of the uh, your temperature tower is printed at 225. The second section up will have a temperature of 220. The third section will have 215 and so on. That way, if your nozzle stops extruding because the temperature is too low, it'll happen at the top of the tower instead of at the bottom and it doesn't ruin your results. Each section is gonna show us oozing, blobs, overhangs, our bridging, oh, rounded corners and stringing. All we're looking for is that section that looks the best and what printing temperature was for that section. We can save that temperature to our profile, get your machine up, and push in plastic. If you have any thoughts of selling your prints and making a few bucks, Producing high quality prints without visual defects will be a big key to your success. Don't try to shortcut your way through by asking people online what temperatures they're printing at. You'll get a hundred different answers from the self-proclaimed 3D printing overlords, all arguing that their number is the right one, including the folks that have been printing for a whopping seven weeks and don't have a clue what a temperature tower is. Be careful who you take advice from. Take the time, print a tower, find out what temperature works best for your printer and the filament you are using. The best time to print a temperature tower, it's when you change filament brands, when you're changing any crucial components to your printer, like the hot end, the heater cartridge, cooling fan, or even the cooling fan duct. Now, remember, all filaments are not created equal. Each filament manufacturer uses a different blend of materials to produce their filaments. PLA from one manufacturer might give great results at 190 degrees, and PLA from another manufacturer might give awesome results at 215, despite being the same material. Now, manufacturers will almost always provide a label with their filament, whether it's on the box, or the spool itself that indicates the temperature range that's best suited for their filament. For example, this GST 3D, it's PLA Plus, has a range of 180 to 230. It's just a guideline. It's not a law and doesn't guarantee the best results. The Ender 5 behind me likes to print this filament at 195. My Ender 5 Plus over in the corner does best with this at 205, but my Ender 3 over here does best with this filament at 215. How do I know this? By printing temperature towers for this filament for every single one of these machines. When I determine the right temperature for one of my printers for a particular brand, I save it to a profile. I include the name of the machine, the filament manufacturer, and the filament type to the profile name for future use. For example, Ender 5 underscore GST3D underscore PLA plus. So, in a nutshell, that's it. Let's get to it and print a temperature tower. All right, so we'll need to open up Cura. I'm using 5.1. The process is the same for earlier versions. I just happen to be using 5.1. Now, if you don't have the calibration shapes installed, we'll have to take care of that first. 
We do that by coming up here to Marketplace in the upper right hand corner. Scroll on down until we find the calibration shapes and click install. We'll accept the terms. When the install is complete, we'll need to quit Cura and restart it for the changes to take effect. Next, we'll come up here to the extensions pull down menu, select parts for calibration, and we'll add a PLA temp tower. And there it is. This ranges from 220 degrees up to 180. Now you don't have to use this one. If you found one on one of the download sites that you like better, you can go ahead and use it. Just load it into Cure like any other file that you're printing. The remaining steps are the same regardless of what tower you choose to print. This is the one that I typically use by Evan Fi on Thingiverse. I hope I said that right. It works out better for me. If you do download one, for the love of God, don't download and use any G code that may have come along with it. There are a lot of things that can go wrong. If you want to know more about why I use this particular tower, let me know down below in the comments. For now, let's just use what we have loaded. The first thing we want to do is click slice. And we'll get some information by clicking preview. And the first thing that stands out is it's 378 layers tall. We'll scroll down to the bottom and see how many are in the base. And there are four layers making up the base. Now let's count the horizontal sections that make up the temperature changes. There are nine temperature changes. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine. Next, we need to figure out how many layers there are in each temperature change. We calculate that out by taking the total number of layers and subtracting the layers that make up the base, then dividing that number by the number of temperature changes. So we'll take 378 minus four, giving us 374, and we'll divide that by the number of temperature changes, nine, for 41.56. Hmm. Hold on. That needs to be a whole number. Now, I've seen a few other videos where they said to round up to 42 layers and others that said round down to 41 layers. Those are both bad ideas. That half a layer per temperature change accumulates somewhere. And by the time it's done printing, your results are useless. Something's wrong and we're going to fix it. This particular model is designed to be printed at a layer height of 0.16 millimeters, but you won't find that information real easily. Let's make that change and re-slice. So we'll change this to 0.16, and also my initial layer I want to be 1.6. Okay, so that looks different. We have. 473 total layers. We'll scroll down and check the base. Okay, we had, it has five layers. Okay, good. Let's figure out how many layers per temperature change. There, we have 473 total layers minus the five layers for the base leaves us with 468 layers divided by nine temperature changes gives us 52 layers per temperature change that looks a whole lot better now this is where the magic happens we're going to add some g-code post-processing it's not as scary as it sounds we're going to click on the extensions pull down click on post-processing and modify g-code First, I gotta get rid of this one I had in there from before. Next, we'll click on add a script and we'll come down and we'll select temp fan tower. We'll add the information we already figured out. For our starting temperature, we'll enter 220 since it's the highest temperature we want to print. We'll set the temperature increment 
at minus five since we want to print each section five degrees less than the previous section. We determine that there are 52 layers per temperature change. So we'll make sure we have 52 in here. And finally, we know the base of our tower is five layers. So we'll want to make sure we have that entered in the change layer offset. Leave the fan unchecked and click close. And we're going to come over here to our to printing temperature. I'm going to change that to 220 degrees. That's what we're printing the first section at. The only other thing we're printing at 220 is the base itself. I'd rather do it at 220 than 200. It's just easier this way. Now we'll go ahead and we'll slice this. And we're gonna save this to a disk where we can find it. I have one in there. I'm just gonna overwrite it. Yes. Now, before we go any further, what we want to do is come back up here to extensions, post-processing and modify G-code one last time. And we we're going to turn off the temp fan tower since we already did our slicing. If we don't turn this off, it'll occur in every print we do going forward. And we'll hit close and let's print this out and see how we do. Obviously a lot of uh, stringing down here at 220, 215, 210, 205 drops off at 200. 195 is looking pretty good. Got a nice bridge there. Not much stringing. I'm not really seeing any stringing to be worried about. 190 doesn't look bad. Starting to get a little fuzzy up in this corner here. 185. It starts to drop off a little bit. There's some stringing in there. You probably can't see it through the camera. Maybe you can. 180, obviously a layer adhesion problem because the temperature was too low. I think 195 is my go-to on this one. What do you think? Let me know down below in the comments. So we found the perfect temperature for this machine with this brand of filament to be 195. I saved that to my profile. Remember to do this for each brand of filament you use or if you change any critical items like hot end parts, like the hot end itself, the heater cartridge, cooling fan, or even the duct. Give it a shot. I'd love to hear about your results. I hope you found this information useful. If you did, let me know down below in the comments Hit that like button and smash that bell. Be your own hero. Live your life one layer at a time. And of course, please, don't forget to subscribe.